is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. After her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, Son of David, do not fear. Take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin will, shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. We are thankful and grateful to God. For yet another opportunity of life and the opportunity that we have to spend uh, with you as we again look into the pages of inspiration. We had indicated that we were going to look at significance of the birth of Christ during this season. We wanted to establish that Jesus is the reason for more than the Christmas season. What I read earlier describes the birth of Christ. And it also included insight on why. But again, it's not about December 25th. It's about every other day before and after December 25th and even on the day of December 25th. Jesus is the reason for more than the Christmas season. In Luke, Luke tells it this way. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of the great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace toward those with whom he is pleased. We say joy to the world, peace on earth, because God so loved that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus is more, is more of the reason than just the Christmas season. Amen. Joy to the world. Jesus brought joy into the world in some very special practical ways. You see, every time he healed a person or cast out a demon or forgave someone of their sins, 
joy was there. Those who came to recognize Jesus as the Savior and the Redeemer of the world were filled with joy when they were in his presence. When the gospel spread in the days of the early church in the first century, we will read where joy followed the message. Now, a very popular song during this time of the year, for whatever reason, we choose to only sing it during this time of the year, but it is far more important message was written by a gentleman by the name of Isaac Watts. He was an English Christian minister who lived uh, at around the 1600s, 1674 to 1748. And Joy to the World first appeared in a collection of other songs. It was a collection named the Psalms of David, Intimidated, I'm sorry. Joy to the World first appeared in his famous collection, The Psalms of David. Watts wrote Joy to the World to encourage the entire world to make a joyful noise about Jesus. Joy to the World is not a Christmas song about Jesus first coming. Many believe that it also is speaking about rather the second coming. Now, whether it's the first or the second, what we do know is that when he came, there was joy. When he comes back, there should be joy for those who know him who have obeyed the gospel of Christ. They will not fear his return. They will be joyful, filled to the brim, knowing that they now will be spending eternity in the presence of the Lord. Psalms 98 and 4 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. When we are faced with day-to-day -day distractions, it can be easy to forget, to seek out peace and find joy in the circumstances that we're in. Creating joy in our lives can be difficult to do. And that's why we need, again, the presence of God through the Holy Spirit. For again, not only does the Holy Spirit through his presence, create a peace that passes all understanding. But he also brings joy, joy in our lives when we are faced with difficult situations and circumstances. We can remember that Jesus came that I might receive joy and that I can always count on God's presence to help me through the difficult times and moments. I sing joy to the world. The Lord has come and the Lord is coming once more. Amen. Amen. My peace I give you, 
I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. What kind of peace did Jesus bring? The biblical peace is more than just the absence of conflict. It is taking steps to resolve a broken situation. It is more than a state of inter tranquility. It's a state of wholeness and completeness designed by God. Biblical peace is not something we can create on our own. It is a byproduct from the Holy Spirit. It is the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is the fruit of the Spirit. This peace that Jesus is talking about, it also includes rest, quiet, or stillness in your heart. It is not, again, the absence of trouble, but it exists in spite of trouble. This peace pushes through all the disturbing situation that life can throw at you. It gives you the ability to endure and be calm even in the face of extreme turmoil. turmoil. This peace doesn't eliminate conflict or trouble, but it gives you the ability to endure through it. Consider it an inner confidence that you know that God will come through in this situation and that removes your fear and worry and replaces it with peace. Something to think and pray about Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for loving me so much that you, the Holy Father and Spirit, decided that Christ would leave heaven's glory to come and be born and live among men that would hate and reject you. Thank you, Father, for helping me to see 
in the midst of all of the commercials and buying noise that is heard during this season of giving gifts. I understand that if you, Father, did not have such wondrous love that allowed Christ to come and redeem me, today I would still be lost in sin. Because you loved me so much that you were willing to come to this earth and purchase my salvation, you were born as a baby in Bethlehem, and you came here with a heavenly plan to seek and save the lost from an eternal punishment being away from you. Thank you so much for coming, Lord. Thank you for loving me enough to suffer, shed your blood as both a man and the Son of God, so you could pay for my sin and save me for the uttermost blessings of heaven. I pray this in the blessed of the coming King, Jesus. Amen. Amen.